Welcome to the Women in Business radio show with Sean Murphy, connecting women in business around the globe. Hello and welcome to the Women in Business radio show studio. Why am I always laughing? <laughs> I'm always laughing. I never managed to get on air without laughing. So welcome to the radio show and also welcome to a new studio. So if you are thinking, what on earth are they doing? This sounds even worse than normal. It's because we basically got a brand new thing of knobs and buttons. And boy, this is really, really weird. It's so strange actually not looking out over what we normally look out um, when we've back, been in our previous studio. But it's I'm really, really... Really, what, what are you fiddling with? My bracelet. I, I, I didn't want it banging on the desk and making loads of noise. One big difference, okay? <laughs> one big difference is that I'm now much closer to my co-host, so I can actually, I can, I can slap her. <laughs> 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 which makes a big difference. Before I had to try and pass notes and we were so far away from each other, we couldn't, we barely couldn't communicate. Chuck them over now the she's top. there. I can, I can poke her with a pointy pen. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's suddenly got an awful lot better. So we are in our brand new studio down at the Trading Post Studios. Um, and I, clearly I have no idea what I'm doing. Hang on a moment. Who have we got in the studio? My co-host today is... Kay Best. And also in the studio with us today, we have our visiting healer, Mark Jennings. Welcome into the studio, Mark. Hello. And we're gonna, Mark is going to be talking with us later about protection and self-healing, which is possibly something if I'd have mentioned that to him earlier than about three minutes before we went <laughs> on air, we would have had a much better broadcast. Also in the studio with us, we have the lovely Chad McKenzie, who is an entrepreneur and business lady who I have known all now for quite some years. She's been working and helping at our events and really sort of growing from strength to strength and a real an absolute dynamo. So it's lovely to finally have Chad in the studio. Thank you, Sean. How can you listen to us? Well, you can listen to us live, which I guess if you're doing it now, you'll sort of already know, on 95.1 and 100.2 FM. And if you would like to listen again, we are available as a podcast. We turn this into a podcast and you can hear us on Audible, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Alexa and Spreaker and really probably about 200 other platforms. So there's loads and loads of ways that you can get hold of us. And, of course, you can listen to us on our own website, which is thewomeninbusinessradioshow.com. And we also have a substack, which is thewomeninbusinessradioshow.substack.com. If you know what Substack is, you know what that is and you'll know where to find us. So I'm just trying to think about what announcements we've had. An organised person would have put it in here, wouldn't they? So we'll just I think we're just going to leave that alone. Um, as part of the show today, we are going to be joining Kay, who's going to be giving us a roundup of some of the things that we can look forward to in April, such as we have, I think we've got the number of the month, haven't we? We've got we tarot have. card of the month. Yeah. Um, we have astrology and we have some healing news with Mark and our special topic, which is protection and self-healing. So basically, if you're in business, it doesn't matter whether you run a wellness business or whatever type of business it is. This is really just a little bit of sort of guidance and support to take you through into April. So I, sh I can stop talking now, can't I? Okay. You can. Right, you can. go on then. Fire, right. fire away. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but next month we're probably going to be videoing this. Yeah, well, <laughs> I might run away. <laughs> so put, put our lippy on. <laughs> so what are, you, what are you starting with, Kay? I'm going to start with uh, the what they call the universal year, because uh, obviously if people haven't listened in before, they probably have no idea what I'm talking about. And um, so... With numerology, it's about numbers, names breaking down into numbers, um, and that's anything, your own name, your address, uh, you use your date of birth and loads of other things. So for the year reading, um, it is obviously 2024. So um, in numerological terms, that breaks down to an eight. Um, so when we're looking at this year, it is about... Um, material success it's about achievement um financial growth and about your business um and what you need to do or might need to do um to help build wealth really it's quite a powerful year so um 
it's probably one of the best to either start a business, try and build your business, um, and just try and overcome challenges, really. And there's obviously loads of challenges with loads of different things, but um, try and think big and be confident that you know what you're going to be doing or you think you know what you're going to be doing, at least, and um, take it from there. It can sometimes mean you need to take a little bit more control um not feeling down about things if you've had a, a bad week if you start thinking uh something's gone wrong because you've had a bad week you're going to end up having another bad week and then a bad year in the end so um it's a cycle of trying to be positive about things um but also not turning into a workaholic um, and making sure that you do have a little bit of time for yourself so um, again it's what steps do you want to take if you're starting it who are you going to involve in that and what deadlines have you got or think you're going to need to get um, so there's loads of loads of stuff that you can um, do to help yourself um, relaxation obviously isn't a very easy thing especially when it's business and not everyone can relax anyway but um, in some ways, it's probably the best thing or to write down, make sure you've got a plan um, of what you're doing. Even if you're an existing business, if you write down what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve that or how you think you want to, um, you've then got something to work with. Um, and what I tend to do is, or, or I started doing over the last few months is, if I'm out and about, but I know I'm going to get home in between, for instance, I'll actually write in my diary things like two hours office time. Um, before that, I might have done that, but a lot of the time they'd be like, oh, that needs doing, that needs doing. So I wouldn't always do it. But by putting it in my diary, I actually really stick to that quite rigidly. So you started doing, so you do sort of block planning. Yeah. So where you, yeah. where instead of um, perhaps planning individual tasks, you yeah. you you put you block stuff into a diary. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really good. T you, you're talking about planning, and one of the things that you know when I'm working with people, and also something that I've noticed my, myself is that. You sort of worry and stress leads yeah. to racing, running around, doing lots and lots of stuff um, and actually sort of stops planning because sometimes yeah. planning can be a bit scary, can't it? You need to it sort of sit be. down and, and sort of look at actually what's happening and it's a lot easier very often to just divert your mind and yeah. just do a lot of useless stuff, isn't yeah. it? And that, at the time that feels a lot better because you're busy, 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 yeah. but it doesn't actually move anything, including your business, forward. It's a hard. It's so hard. It's so hard to stop racing. Yeah. Because then potentially you start worrying because you've got time to think about the yeah. stuff that you're worrying about and sit down and start planning. Yeah. But if you don't, nothing is going to work. No. I know that nothing no. is going to work if you don't stop racing. And, and force yourself almost to start planning. And it will get better. Yeah, The more does. you do that and the more planning you do, it will get better. Um, it I also helps to, if you're doing that, is to actually also plan some kind of time off, even if it's only mm. an hour or two again. Because uh, quite often, once we get into something, we don't take the time off. And then all we're going to do is end up burning ourselves out. Yeah, And then that is counterproductive mm. really because you get to the point where you just can't do it anymore for a little while i mean it's so difficult every morning i get up and i think oh i'll do some yoga this morning do i no <laughs> of course i don't but i have to because you know i'm 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 an older lady i'm sort of in my 60s and it it doesn't matter what you do about it if you if you stop moving it all stops and yeah. you have to keep that stretching going you have to start some sort of movement and the best way i've found to do it is to manage to control the worry manage to control the let's get up and start racing around and start yeah. doing things poking buttons doing admin um because that's a great diversionary tactic isn't it you can't worry about something when you're poking and pressing buttons and doing meaningless stuff um, because you're busy, 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 busy. Yeah. Of course, when you start doing yoga, you actually sort of have to stop. And if you're not careful, you start thinking. Um, but to actually, you have to sort of get into it and you just have to force yourself to do it. Otherwise, if you're not careful, by three o'clock, everything's just seized 
up. Yeah. And by, you know, another week and a half, um, it's totally seized up and you can hardly move. Yeah. yeah. So I don't like to work, use words, terms like forcing yourself, but you sort of do, don't you? Yeah. yeah Especially you have with to. that planning. Yeah. And the other thing I tend to do is now, again, I get up earlier but in my head straight away it's I want to be in the office by such and such a time Mm. and then quite often I get an extra hour or two in the mornings before I'm seeing people as well so and again writing it in Mm. is I've told a couple of people about doing that more recently um, and they've actually come back and said that they hadn't thought about doing that but by doing it they're being more productive as well. Mm. I think so. we we spend far too much time running around and doing things that we think need doing and actually not stopping and not looking after ourselves. Yeah. Where is it that they've just introduced a four-day week? Is it in Sweden where they've introduced a four-day week and they're finding that um that they're getting more that they're getting mm. more productivity out of people who were doing less hours and I think we always hear this don't we 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 hear it said quite a lot um and you sort of think yes okay I can see why that happens and why that would work but actually doing it is really hard yeah you know when I try to reduce the time that I work like that I I couldn't do it I'm now getting better at it. I find wine helps, wine and pies. Um, but you know, the, the trick is to be able to re- is to be able to switch off and relax without hopefully being slumped in a stupor over the yeah. sofa, um, <laughs> so that you can maybe do something a little bit more constructive. Um, it's not it's not the easiest thing to do, but you if 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 you start it and you're rigid about it, it does work. It if you does. work less hours, you get more done. Yeah, yeah. And you need to fit your life in. I think that's something that we forget to do, isn't it? We 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 don't fit our we don't fit our we don't fit. <laughs> nothing ever goes right, does it? Look, we're always we're digging away. <laughs> oh, we've had far worse than that. Um, so you yes, you just need to remember to fit your life in because mm. if you don't sort your body out, if you don't sort your mind and your body out, you actually can't run a business. No. No, so and that is that's how I fit my life in as well in the diary. If I know yeah. I'm going anywhere, seeing anyone in particular, it still goes in there as mm. that's what I'm doing, mm. because then I know that's what I'm working around. So hands up, hands up, any listeners who write stuff down on their to do list and in their planner and their diary that isn't an actual appointment, and then don't look at it ever. And then wonder why they don't get anything done. Mm. I was wondering, Kate, do you write this down in a physical diary rather than an app on your phone? No, physical diary. Mm. Yeah, I use a physical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I'm constantly in and out of the diary, so it sort of keeps going in. And because of some of the commitments that I have week to week anyway, I know where I am or what I'm doing. So now a lot of the time in my head I'm already going to be in the office and doing things at certain times, but um, I still look in and out of the diary all the time. I actually run a four-year diary because of what I do. I plan, sometimes I have to Mm. plan a year, two years ahead. I think a challenge with, certainly a challenge that I have, and it might be that it's a topic for the future actually, is integrating sort of, um, I'm not sure if integrating is the right, right word, but getting your physical diary and your physical notes because I'm a, I'm a great believer in actually putting a proper pen to proper paper. Yeah. Um, and that the connection between your head and your hand is quite a powerful one and that uh, sitting down and opening a book, a real book, a proper diary is is something that's far more powerful than looking at something online. On the other hand, there are times when we act, we just need to have online organisation. Yeah. Um, an example is, for instance, you get um, you have an appointment with somebody that's online that has a Zoom link. You cannot write that down in a physical diary. No. You have to have that online. So how do you how do you get those two together? It's no good having, you know, meeting with George written in your physical diary if in order to have that meeting with George you you have to go you can't write the URL out. You have to go hunting through piles of emails to actually find that link. 
So we need, in, in this day and age certainly, to be able to tie those two things together yeah. and be able to manage them effectively. And I think that's, that, can be, that can be quite difficult. What I've ended up with in the past is actually two sets of diaries, neither of which are right. Because, <laughs> because you, you know, if you write and if you if you write, okay, I'm meeting whoever in a cafe, or I'm doing, you know, this is what I need to do, and you you block out your calendar for 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 uh, particular tasks, for instance, and then you update that one, but you don't update your online one, and you have to have an online one because you have online meetings and things being sent through to you that way. Yeah. Um, I, that I I think it, it is tricky, and I'm okay for about a week. And then the, they and then they start drifting apart <laughs> until until I don't until I don't know which one's right and probably neither of them are right. No. Um, so we'll have to have a look at that. The closest that I've ever come to it, I think, is is Notion, where you can print Notion out. Um, you can print it out. It has a diary integrated into it, but um, but still, you know, you print it out and then you write on it, and now straight away you now have. Actually, a third version of your <laughs> of your diary because you've written on it, and unless you unless you are disciplined enough to actually go back and update your online calendar, this is how this is how it, yeah. the chaos starts. So I think we we might run a show about that in in the future. Okay, <laughs> right. So we've gone we've gone disappearing off down the planning route, haven't we? Yes. Um, yeah. So n- did we finish number of the month, or did you have more to uh, do? That's the number. That's the number of the month. We finished that part. What was the number of the month? You can tell I'm on the ball. Cut three. 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 <laughs> okay. Nothing gets by me. No. So universal year number three. Okay. Um, so if anyone wants to go and look it up for more information, they'll be able to find that quite easily online. There we go. Universal year number three. Okay. So what follows on next from that? Tarot cards associated with uh, numerology or with the number three. Um Obviously, April or going into April, as we are the end of this week, uh, is the star sign Aries. Um, Aries are quite famous for being passionate and and motivated star sign. They can, to a point, be quite fiery. And um, they're almost like those that want to get out there and go and get it, but they don't always want to put in the correct work if that makes sense they might go off on a tangent like probably we all do at times and then not be able to find their way so back so they're happy to they're not they're not they're not not working they're just perhaps not doing the work that they should in be the doing correct, yeah in yeah in that way so again planning in that might just be where someone needs to mm. go um the in the major arcana of the tarot cards the um tarot card linked with Aries and April is the Emperor. Um, the Emperor himself um, has a very strong personality, and a lot of people in. Um... <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. See, we're, we're, uh, one of the problems now is we're in a studio where everybody can see everything. Um, and I've just distracted Kay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Kay, whilst flicking somebody else to get me some water. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, So the Emperor is a very strong personality. He's quite high up in the uh, tarot deck, being, uh, well, he's the fourth card in the tarot deck, so although it's a little bit further on in that sense, uh, very headstrong, Um, the Emperor and Aries both like to be leaders. Uh, they don't like it if there's anything lower than that. And in some ways, that's not a bad thing because they'll go to work and do anything and everything they can to get to where they want to be. Um, they don't always um, believe in authority figures trying to show them or tell them what to do. And they can turn around and become quite hostile um, in that way. Um, so they can be very dominating, forceful, um, but helpful in other ways as well. Thank you. So um, an airy sign needs to stay grounded where possible or learn techniques to keep them uh, grounded. Some of the keywords to um, describe 
the emperor and the Aries personality, uh, the good ones are all they like authority if they're in authority. Uh, they will often work with a structure uh, and leadership. The other side of that is they can be a dictator, uh, want domination and um, try and push other people out the way, really, just to try and see, um, you know, where they're, what they think is right and not necessarily what the powers that be think is right. So is there a potential that as an Aries... Um that there might be a problem with them perhaps taking some direction or advice from, say, a mentor who is... So if we look at sort of what the strict term of a mentor is, it's somebody who's sort of done it before, I think, yeah. and and you are following along behind them. So, yeah. you know, the idea is they say, well, this is, you know, this is the way to go. So does that mean that somebody who's perhaps um, a strict Aries may have problems tapping into that and yeah. taking that advice? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. And simply because they don't want to take information from somebody they see as being a, a, an yeah. authority or, or controlling figure, yeah. not necessarily because they've looked at the information that they're being no. given and making an objective decision based on I don't think that's right for for me and I don't think that's right for my business. Yeah. Yeah. And it, they'll often also look at it that um, regardless of whether they're right or wrong. Um, if they've got an idea, it's a good idea, but they don't always want to listen to other people's ideas. Okay, so if um, so, 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 this information would primarily apply to people who are who who were born in April. Yeah, in that Aries. Yeah. So the general advice is is just be aware. Yeah. Of potentially this trait and just look and, and sort of try and st- take a step back from trying to take a step back from the way that your mind very often will work yeah. and make and make a, an almost outside judgment as to whether what you're being presented with is a good idea yeah. or a bad idea based on other information that you've got and not based on what you do and don't like yeah yeah mm. the uh, minor arcana card that goes um with aries in the month of april is the uh, Four of Wands. Um, That shows drive and uh, stability. It also shows that certain relationships can thrive. Uh, Again, if it's worked at, um, it also shows independence and strength. But again, a very fiery card in that sense. So, and obviously Aries is a, a fire sign, the same as Sagittarius and Leo. So um, it's, again, what are they going to say or do? And if you go into business with somebody as a partner, um, that may be one thing worth looking at as well, is how well do they know them as a person? Um, Are they wanting someone to go into business that they can work with or is it going to be someone that they're going to try and push out the way and so they can make all the decisions and be Mm. the leader in a sense in that way? Yes, I suppose because you need somebody to be in charge of, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And if you're you're not in a position or you don't want to employ staff, then the only way to be in charge is to have somebody else in the business with you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it can be. So, and then if work if work is then unbalanced because one person, if it is just just the two, work can become very unbalanced, and obviously then things are going to start going wrong. Uh, any co-workers that you've got there are going to start falling by the wayside, and we all hear gr- over over time you always get somebody or a company that may get a name for people leaving and going back and that kind of thing Mm. so it can be really frustrating as well so i think what i'd like to do which is really seriously disruptive but especially while we're on air but i'm going to take a photo actually whilst we're on air of these two of these two cards just so so now i've taken them away from Kay. she can't see them i've got them let's just take so we're going to get a picture of those cards up on the write up for the show. Is there anything else that we need to? Is there anything else that we need to know about those cards and um, the the positive sides uh, of these cards as well? Is it does show progressive expansion as long as there's teamwork. 
Um, the other side of that is often somebody will be unprepared, which leads to frustration with others around. So, um, but Un- that unprepared, is, yeah. But not. that is also that's also typical of the Aries sign. So it isn't just. I'm the not. Card, an, I'm not that, Aries. You're not I'm Aries. Not Aries. And I don't. Perhaps I am prepared. Perhaps I'm more prepared than I think I am. I think people expect me to have lots of stuff, plans, and books, and I don't. So they think I'm unprepared. What star sign are you, Taurus? Yes. I wonder if you've got. Uh, are you very closely into May? Your birthday. First of May. First of May. So yeah, you're sort of right on the cusp, aren't you? There of um, Aries. Oh, Aries, Taurus. You're right. You're not that far in. Oh, okay. So you may well have. You may have traits of Aries that, if you recognise them, sometimes you can. I don't know. I think online you can probably find places where if you know the time you were born and the date and that and put it on there, you'll be able to see where, the, where Aries was in that, in within that astrological period. Not that I know loads about astrology, but... Um, you, know, you know enough, though. Yeah, yeah. You'll you know, probably you... find that there may well be something there. Especially if it's the first of May, because that is literally just coming I out. I don't isn't know it? if I'm fiery or not. I think it's probably best to ask other people whether I'm. Yeah. A, what do you the... think, then, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm quite calm. You're very controlling when it comes to your events, though. So that's the Aries coming out. But you have that to be controlling. Be. You can't have people running around all over the place. No, can exactly. You? You've got to have some a degree of control. Yeah. So. In order to run an event, you have to have it. I, I think to run events, you have to have you have to have a degree of control that enables people to do to do what they do with some flexibility, but without it getting out of hand. And you have to be prepared to think on your feet. Yeah, because nothing yeah. goes. According, there's no point in having a plan or too much of a plan because nothing goes to plan. <laughs> but anyway. Are we done? Is, is are we done? Is that the tarot? For That's the... pretty much it. Yeah, the tarot that goes with the numbers. Um, so then this month I've, um, taken note of the color of the month, which is red, um, which is a really good card to have for a month anyway. It's full of strength, energy, creativity. Um, the only downside to red is, uh, again, could be fiery, um, and very, very destructive and irritable. So... Looking at, at at the positive sides of red as a as a colour, yeah, this it would be a a good month to be building to um, I wouldn't say do a lot of stuff, but bring a lot of energy into what you're doing. Yeah, it's an excellent um, month for that. Fi- fire fire it up yeah. and build. Just be aware of I don't want to say getting too overexcited, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but tipping too far over perhaps the edge yeah so don't let it don't you know keep a control of it don't let it run away too much yeah yeah Mm. yeah and then um lastly the astrology for um april after sitting here saying i don't know much about it um aries energy is or has ways of being very challenging very challenging behavior um and things if you don't start taking action or know what direction you want to go in you're not going to do anything at all so you've got to know everything that you want okay so so this would apply to everybody not just somebody who who was born in april this is just generally the energy that is around this month so if so, so basically, the energy can be very strong, which means it can be a bit overwhelming, yeah. which means if you don't have a clear path, you end up being like a rabbit in the headlights yeah. and doing and, and achieving very little. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Aries is also a cardinal moon sign, um, which means they can act very impulsively as well. So that comes back to that fiery bit where they're, just going to go and get what they want to get regardless of of who uh, what happens whether it's right wrong or whether they thought about it really so i mean i think this is sort of quite good advice anyway for anybody wherever you are is that you know we're coming up to the start of a new quarter coming up to the start of a new 
month yeah. is to make sure that you have some clear plans in place. Yeah. Those plans may change, but at least you have a stepping off point and you know where you're going so that you don't um, you don't end up just sort of staring at the wall in a stupor because yeah. you're just overwhelmed with lots and lots of stuff to do, loads yeah. and loads of energy to get it done, but not knowing where to start. Well, that's it. And they can also start doing something and midway through that decide they're going to do something else. So they'll go off and do something else and then forget about what they were doing. So... Unfinished projects as well can be. <laughs> oh, I um, can't, can't imagine that. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> Who behaves like that? <laughs> so they they can. So uh, they might need a little bit more structure in their life. Structure. <laughs> oh my God, look, look, like rules. Yes, we've been told that there's to be no swearing. Okay. <laughs> And there you go, bringing up words like structure and rules. Okay, right. So is that... Are we done for our monthly roundup? Yeah, I think, think so, as far so, as that goes. from my little scribbledy notes, pulling that all together, I think with everything that you have said, it really is a time for making sure that you've got those... that you have the direction, that you have the plans. Um, I suppose with that is, is a target. Um, but... Having having said that, I think sometimes it, if you've got that direction and you know what you're going to be taking and the actions that you need to take, that sometimes can be more important than an absolute hard and fast target. Yeah, yeah. There isn't a hard and fast target. There's a goal, isn't there? A that, target is yeah. a bit of a... I like targets because they're movable. Mm. You can ha- you can hit a moving target. Um, but be clear, be clear about where you're going. Don't yeah. let your energy sort of get away with you. Um, and to take advantage of the high energy that we have at the moment to build. Yeah, yeah. And maybe if they are one for writing things down in the diary, they could write it down almost like a goal. So their goal setting, not just I've got to do that because I've written mm. it in. They could set their self goals to do things by and mm. write that down. And if it's written down, you're far more likely to get it done. Yeah. And if you've written it down and you remember where you've written it and you go yeah. back and have a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of these are very important. <laughs> so, and previously we also spoke about building into this time, especially if it's a time of high energy, time for yourself, time to look after yourself. And I think with the with the healing side of things and the healing news and moving through into April... I think what I'm seeing is a lot more information and a lot a, a greater tendency to start looking after yourself yourself and rather than perhaps relying on going out somewhere or doing something or for somebody else to come in and support you in that yeah. way to actually sort of take control and it could be that you take yourself off to something like a, a gong bath or a spa but also that you start to take control of your own healing yeah as opposed to maybe going and look, going to a healer. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the problem with that is it puts, it puts an awful lot of responsibility on you. You can't make any excuses, oh, they couldn't fit me in, or I couldn't do that, or I couldn't book this, or that didn't happen, or I didn't have enough money. You sort of, there's no excuse, because you can do this for nothing at home, can't you, yeah. just by yourself. Yeah. And I think perhaps now is a time, I'm, I'm hoping Mark's got something to say. Have you got... <laughs> well, now, now that you're finished. <laughs> yeah. have you... Now we're going to let him talk. Yeah, now, now, that, now that I told you, like I must have told you all of 30 seconds before we went on air what the topic was, I'm rather hoping you have something that you can say. So welcome, Mark Jennings, who is a... He's a hen- energy healer. You're a Reiki master and also an Access Bars practitioner. That's correct, yes. So, say something. <laughs> um, well... <laughs> Since the um, obviously the, the days have started getting longer, the weather is changing. It should, in theory, be getting ple- more pleasant. Um, this is now becomes a good time of the year to actually get out in nature and spend time outside. Um, so leave the technology behind and go outside and actually, if you can, even walk barefoot in the grass. Hug a tree. Literally just stand for five minutes and hug a tree. Just let your mind wander and leave the the cares of the world behind um and the other thing to remember is 27th of april world healing day oh 
Okay. So I, I didn't realise that. So World no, Healing Day. So what that means is that potentially there's going to be an awful lot of resources out there, aren't there, um, about healing, how you can tap into it, ideas, all of this sort of thing. Yeah, and if you go and have a look, you'll probably find there's also a lot of um, uh, retreats and things coming mm. up now. This It's that time of year where everybody's sort of, it, the winter's over and they're coming out of their mm. caves and it's time well, to Well, the winter's not over everywhere, is it? Can we do have we do have some international listeners who may <laughs> still be in the depths of, of snow. Yes, of snow and and winter. So um hopefully they're in they're in that cycle and at some mm. point they're going to they're going to come back out again. I can't imagine uh, living in somewhere like Iceland, I have to say, and it would be really interesting maybe to have somebody on the show from Iceland or, or a country where there is perhaps a lot of uh, darkness that goes on for a period yeah. of time. I, I'm, I suspect I'm showing my ignorance here um, to see how they deal with it. And that could perhaps help people like me who tend not to le- go out. I just, I don't go out really. I'm a bit of an indoor cat, aren't I? <laughs> 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 don't like to go out too much. Um, but what you were saying about um, actually going barefoot, I think, is a really sort of interesting concept. There's quite a lot of information online at the moment about grounding. Mm. Yeah. Um, and going out and touching ground, even concrete. I don't think it actually has to be oh, yeah. earth, you, does I mean, it? you can be in, inside your own home, but take your shoes off. Mm. You know, you don't need to take your socks off as well, but just take your shoes off. Put your feet flat on the floor. Mm. Just connect with the earth a bit yeah. and turn 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 the we hear this so often that it's almost not worth saying anymore, is it about turning off the phone? Yeah. 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 yeah just put it onto airplane mm. mode for even for five or ten minutes. But I think um I think becoming becoming aware of um I think becoming aware of potentially a dopamine addiction where you actually can't leave the phone alone, where as soon as you, you, you stop looking, at, you know, doing something, you know, so every every three to four minutes you're, you're back on that phone again. I think if yeah. you can just become aware of it, I think that's possibly one of the most powerful things to do because it's quite a secret sort of subversive You mean just thing. catch yourself picking yes, the thing yes, up and thinking, yeah. what am I doing right this yeah. minute? I actually took mail off my phone. I moved it somewhere else so that I can't easily get it because I found that I had a, like a little thing. I'd open up mail. I'd open up mail on my phone. Complete and utter waste of time. I can't, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just opening it up. And so I caught myself doing it and I moved it off the front page and I made it off, off the front screen of my phone and made it a lot harder to find. And now I have a little rule in place. I don't, I don't access mail on my phone. I access mail on my computer and that's where I, that's where I can and do respond to it properly. Yeah. Um, I only have it on my phone in case there is an emergency. If somebody mm. has sent me something through and it is an emergency, um, and then I do need to be able to get hold of it in that way. But I, I put a rule in. Yeah. yeah, I haven't got that problem. If I go for a walk or I even go to the shop or I go in the garden, I don't take my phone. I leave it at home. It's mm. a good idea. I yeah. just leave it at home. No, it would run after me, crying and screaming. <laughs> I, mean, I, t- I, take it, I take it in the van when I'm driving in case I break down or something like that. But otherwise, if I'm outside... I don't take no. my phone. I leave if, it at home. If if I left if I left it at home, it would throw itself off the counter onto the floor and smash itself. Yeah, but what did we do years and years ago before the uh, time of mobiles? Do you know well, what I mean? we didn't. I, I knew, you're absolutely right. You are. I mean, I'm not that much older than you. I know I'm <laughs> quite a bit older than you, but. You well, know. I didn't grow up with mobile phones or computers. No, me either. Actually, no, there was no computers. Com- computers didn't computers didn't exist. Television barely existed. Mm. I I grew up in a time when we had um, one TV station. Absolutely, one TV station that had I think about two children's programs a week if we were lucky. Yeah. Um I think one of them was possibly Blue Peter. And I, I and it was in black and white and I remember not being allowed to watch ITV because yeah. it was like no, my dad bit, wouldn't let me bit, watch ITV. Bit like I don't know risky. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah racy. And at 10 o'clock at night it would turn off, wouldn't it? Yeah. And loads of big bulky tellies that you had to put 50p in the slot or something to make it go. I mean, read a fusion, that is. <laughs> yes, so... But now, leave your phone at home. If you go for a walk, you go and de-weed the garden, anything like that. Leave your phone. You see, at the time I, I leave home without my phone to go for a walk, I fall into a ditch. 
I know I will. I'll do it on purpose. <laughs> I'll, fall, I'll fall into a ditch and that'll be it. I'll be stuck. Um, but seriously, though, whether you take your phone or not take your phone, I, I, I think actually putting it down. One of the things that I found and I, I noticed the other day is that it's almost like another world in the phone, isn't yeah. there? It's like a world that goes on forever in the phone. And there you are. You can look at it and you're stuck in this other world that goes on. It's like the, it's like that for the Matrix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when you put the phone down, you sort of come back into this world, into... The real world, if you yeah. like, and, and see and start to see everything around us properly. And I think we just get too used to being in that other other world where yeah. everything is open to us. I wouldn't go back. I wouldn't not have the internet. I wouldn't not have my phone. But I do think we do need to get out and get ourselves grounded a bit. Yeah. And if we didn't have them, we probably wouldn't be doing what we're doing now either with like what we do mm. work-wise or communication yeah. we wouldn't be doing any yeah. of it would we I mean, it's, at all. it's a fantastic opportunity i just think on a personal level i think people just need i i i, I can't dictate for other people i just I only think i can but, <laughs> <laughs> but i think on a personal level i need i need to monitor and be aware of my own behavior around something and and how that affects me or, or doesn't affect me mm. so and perhaps know when to put your computer down and have a bit of a rest I, I do have a lot of trouble doing do that. Do you take your computer to bed with you so it's there if you want to get up and start working? No. There are sometimes I don't actually get out of bed and I'm just in there. I do, I do sometimes work from bed on my computer, actually. So not often, but I do. And I've relaxed about that a lot, a lot as it happens. Yeah. I used to give myself quite a lot of grief by having these boundaries of what I would and wouldn't do. Oh, no, it's wrong to do that. You mustn't do that. Don't work from bed. Don't do this. Have that. You know, that's your relaxation space. That's this. That's that. And and I just decided to stop that. And I, yeah. I actually find life an awful lot easier and better now that I haven't got these, which are actually other people's self-imposed yeah. rules of you should and shouldn't do that and the way to re- you know the way to relax is to have a special space and 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 when I say actually do you know that's lovely that's fine for you but it's not fine for me and actually yeah. this is okay for me yeah you know this is okay for me it comes along with the realization that my my life and my business I don't know how I don't need I don't need to organize my work-life balance I yeah. love what I, I love what I do yeah I love it. I don't need to split it up. No. It's my, my business and what I do isn't a punishment. No. It's not something I have to do and, and then I come home and do something else that I really, really like. I yeah. love it. Yeah, so do I. So it doesn't matter where I am and what I'm doing. And if I decide I'm going to work from bed, that's fine. That's fine. Mm. And I do that quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get an email from me, <laughs> just think, is she in her jammers? <laughs> The sometimes I wondered because sometimes you, where you'll email me or message me and go, I'm working from the bed at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you probably I, don't say that I to don't, too I many don't. people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. But there are times when that's just what I want to do because also it, there's there's no distraction or disruption. No. You know, I, I don't have televisions or noise or other people or anything like that. So, you know, that's a space where it's actually like a little sort of sanctuary and yeah. I can just stay there and work. Yeah, yeah. Quietly, just to myself. So, there you go. I'm not in bed at the moment, by the way, <laughs> people. I'm up. <laughs> I'm up and in the studio. <laughs> so I'm fully dressed. And, yes, and, and fully, fully. Well, mostly, yes, and fully dressed. So, but of course, you can't see below the table, can you? <laughs> Could be anything going on under here. So, um, Mark, I we did mention at the start, and you didn't say anything. You didn't go, <laughs> I, I can't do that. Um, we did talk a little bit about, and we, we haven't got too long left, about pretension, not pretension, <laughs> that's me again, um, protection and self-healing. Yes. So, what do we mean by protection? Um, well, quite often you can pick up on other people's energies, which then makes you feel uncomfortable. So it's about protecting yourself from that, um, those energies and essentially keeping yourself in your, your business frame of mind rather than becoming distracted and taken away by whatever else mm. is, is sort of playing about on the edges of your consciousness. 
so I suppose if we – it all sounds a bit woo-woo and weird, that, doesn't it? But um, I think probably – most of us have actually experienced this in one way or another, not necessarily in our business, but it could be that you know a person who, um, you know a person that even if you're in a massive crowded room or or you walked into a house, quite a big house, you'd know if that person either came into the room or was in the house yeah. because they oh, have yeah. a quite a crackly sort of vibrant energy and you and you just you just know that yeah yeah it could be that or it, mm. it could be that they're stressed about yeah. one of the children or something and you just pick up on that bit mm. of stress which just knocks you off kilter yeah yeah and i think the other time i think a lot you know other, i think probably we can all relate to this is knowing somebody who perhaps makes us just feel worn out yeah and a bit tired and down, um, yeah, so, and, and so they're just and it's and it's a, you know it's a constant thing. You know, if you're going to meet that person, that is going to be oh yeah oh yeah. god it's, yeah. So that could be that they are doing that deliberately. So okay, they, that they try to control the situation and they set this sort of energy level up themselves before they come into the room. So they're they're trying to manipulate something specifically, or okay, I hadn't thought of so it like so, that. Somebody that's worried about their child—that's normally unintentional. If you're yeah. getting that energy, that they don't—they don't mean mm. to sort of have that effect on you. That's just what they've got going in the back of their head. But some people will actually sort of—I don't know—I suppose try and psych themselves up for the meeting mm. or whatever it is. But the energy that they then produce makes everybody else sort of want to leave the room. So, so you could find yourself in a situation where you are meeting, it could be a member of your family or somebody that you work with, where their energy is always quite low and makes you feel low. It could be that you have a meeting set up and it could be somebody you haven't met before and then they come into the room and suddenly you could feel your anxiety levels rising um, and that sort of thing. Yeah. There's an old saying, actually, I think it was Jim Rowan or somebody that said, some people light up the room when they enter, others light up the room when they leave. Mm. Yeah. And we all know... Who they are. Who they are <laughs> with certain people. They they yeah. walk into the room and immediately it's like, ooh, that wasn't very nice. Yeah. Mm. And yes. unfortunately then you just have to steer clear, smile a lot, and they don't like that. You mm. just smile at them and say, good morning. But sometimes, sometimes, and I think this is where the protection side of it comes mm. in, sometimes you can't. You may need to have a meeting with that person. It may be something that you can't avoid. I think, I think in business, one of the best words that we can learn is no. Mm. And if somebody really doesn't feel right, if, if you're meeting with a potential client for the first time, and you have that sort of feeling that it's uncomfortable, you're uncomfortable, even though they may be grinning away and making all of the right noises. You know, you may it may be that you just have that feeling yeah. that, you know, and, and very often, especially when there's a lot of money involved, it can be really tempting to brush it off as, oh, that, you know, oh, well, it was me or this or that, or it'll be fine. It'll be OK. They won't be like that normally. Um, and it really is, you know, it, it's time to actually sort of sit down and take stock and sort of not agree to anything and then just seriously think it through. Because if that's how you're yeah. feeling on, on an initial meeting, yeah. um, it's probably going to continue like that. But I think if you're if you're feeling very anxious and you've got somebody, you know, has come into the room, it could be that they're anxious as well. So yeah, it could exactly. be that you're picking up on um, it could be that you're picking you're picking up on their anxiety it's not your anxiety it's their anxiety yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. as i said they, they could be stressed because they've got to go to the doctors yeah. or or whatever you know like, like most of us get a little bit stressed shall we say if we got to go mm. to the dentist for example they may be going to yeah. leave the meeting and go straight to a dental appointment mm. and you're just picking up on that level of stress that they've got so i suppose the trick is whether it's a client that you're meeting whether it's a member of staff whether it's a business partner it could be a relative or something along those lines is to is to almost sort of neutralize the effect of that if of so that 
you're sitting in your own energy. You're not affected by whatever they're going through or whatever they've brought into, we'll call it the party, mm. so that you can feel okay, for one thing, feel your own stuff and not everybody else's, um, but also make proper reasoned judgments and decisions based on good information and potentially your gut instinct, but without being influenced by everybody else's energy rubbish. Yeah. So what what can you do? Well, the, the first thing you can do is sort of cut the cord between the two of you, and you can do that in however a mental picture you want to do it. So you could do it with a great big pair of scissors or you could have a door that slides across or you just push shut, whatever you want. So this is a visualisation. Uh, yeah, visualization. This is a visualisation technique where you are mentally putting, putting a barrier between the two of you so that um, basically any, any energy that they're putting out is not coming to yeah, you. Yeah, so you're cutting that cord, stopping okay. the energy coming. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. The other thing that you can do is you can imagine a cord from you to the earth. Okay, so you are grounding yourself mm -hmm. so that it doesn't matter what they chuck at you. You're just going to send it like you do in an electrical circuit. So you're just sending everything straight to earth. It's not going to touch you. Or if it's somebody that, um, as, as uh, Chad said, with, with you just know that person every time you meet them, then you can just seal yourself in a little energy bubble before you go into the room to meet them. Those are really, I think they're really simple, actually. Mm. I'm just sort of sort of thinking it through, and I think those are really, really simple. I think the, the, the biggest trick is going to be actually remembering to do it. Yeah. yeah. And that if you get too influenced by the energy, what well, it could be good or bad, but if you get too influenced by the energy, then actually you're too far down the road before, before in, in a little pit of misery, before you remember to actually sort of cut the cord or do the bubble. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, right. so the, there's, um, if you find yourself getting angry quickly is one thing. Um, or you you start f suddenly feeling self conscious or insecure. Ah, okay. That's quite often a good sign that there's something mm. not quite right here. And we see it in other ways as well, don't we? We see it in people who are really good with audiences, people who can get up on a stage and fire up an audience almost without <coughs> doing anything. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, so there's all sorts of um, you know, th there's all sorts of ways that this can manifest, and sometimes that's quite good. Hmm. You you might you know when you go when you're going along to a concert, if you've played a lot of money, actually what you what you're sort of looking for is that your energy levels will be increased and will be yeah. high, and that yeah. you'll really enjoy yourself. So you don't necessarily want to be putting a little bubble out there, and you don't want to be like the Billy No Mate sat in one corner of the auditorium <laughs> whilst everybody else is bouncing up and down, really enjoying themselves, yeah. <laughs> and. Um, and you're really enjoying yourself and what they're, what, you know, or they're really enjoying themselves and you're just sat there. Um, so it's really sort of, I think, about becoming aware, isn't it? Making, making decisions. Yeah, it's um, just being aware mm. of what, how you're feeling and then thinking to yourself, what could be affecting this? I think that is really useful, useful information. Certainly if you're in business, I... I I've found myself in a number of situations sort of previously where perhaps I'm feeling something that I don't necessarily want to feel. And it would be very, very useful. I know now that it's very, very useful to actually sort of cut that off mm. and, rem and remove myself from the situation. But as I say, sometimes you... You can't remove yourself mm. from the situation. Yes, no, I meant, I, meant, I meant energetically yeah, remove yes, myself. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't explain it very well. It's me told off. <laughs> 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 and energetically remove myself from yeah. the situation. Yeah. And in a similar way, going back to what we were talking about earlier, if you're um, in business with somebody and they bring you down, you could pr you could try one of those techniques with that. Yeah, for and sure. it would yeah. still or get rid of them. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the other option. <laughs> that's the benefit of being the boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> Be gone. <laughs> right, OK. That's enough of that. OK, thank you so much, Kay. Thank you so much for bringing your roundups to, to the show and for co-hosting. Thank you for Mark Jennings, healer and um, all things extraordinary and weird in the energy world. Thank you for your updates. Thank you, Chad, for joining in the discussion. And we will see you all very, very shortly for the Women in Business radio show. <laughs>
Tune in next week to the Women in Business radio show for more stories, ideas and inspiration to help you grow your business.